quarterback. Turnover. Tipped. It finds Tatum. They double team him. Took it out of traffic. Welcome to Celtics Post Game My Live, God. presented by your New England Ford dealers and Ford trucks. Scal, Chris Forsberg, Amina Smith here with you. The Celtics win this one against the Nets, 126 to 120. And my gosh, is right. It felt like a playoff <laughs> atmosphere watching this game. And Scal, I told you before we got on air, it really felt like this is probably the best game the Celtics played all season. Yeah, long. I would agree with that. It's like, you know, they didn't guard very well throughout the game. But how about late in the game, you know, trapping uh, KD and rotating out of it? Jason Tatum, this is the best, in my opinion, you know, I've seen him play every single game in, of his life. This is the best game he has ever played. He had a great feel for it. He went against his, I want to call it his hero, a guy he looked up to, a guy he played with USA Basketball, and absolutely delivered. Shot after shot, late in the fourth quarter. Like, this is next level Jason Tatum. And I warned you guys, I told you guys, Jason Tatum is playing the best basketball I've ever seen. And today, with the best basketball he's ever played in this performance against the Nets, the guy is starting to enter into the conversation of a top five player in the league. And when you have a top five player on your team, Ooh, the yeah. outcome and the expectations are different mm. of where you're supposed to. This is not a first round exit team. This is oh, a yeah. team that should have their eyes set on the NBA finals. It, it's crazy, man. That sequence where you just plowed through the Nets team picture and got the layup, like that is a big boy basketball play from Jason Tatum. And he just rose to the moment. We sat here at halftime and said, oh man, KD reminding us why he's one of the best players on earth with all the shot making and how would Tatum be able to go punch for punch with him? Well, second half, Tatum did it. And it's amazing to see. Because when you watch him every night, maybe, maybe it's not as jarring as when maybe the national viewers tune in and all that. But, I mean, man, it, it really went the last couple of weeks, and it was just like he's, on a, he's up on that next extra line. And, and same thing, I don't know where we can sit here and rank them, but we were going through the, the best players in the Eastern Conference, and we said, right now, probably the fourth best player in the Eastern Conference. Maybe higher. We mm -hmm. don't know that. We just don't, like, when you start to unfold a playoff series, besides KD and his shot-making ability, Jason Tatum, like, who would you want the ball in their hands right now? Like, I, I love Giannis, but... Tatum is the next level right now when it comes to decision making. And it's just fun to watch. I mean, the, the, so one of the only things that have been going against him this year has been his three point shot. Tonight, 8 of 15, made that shot a weapon. Tice gets in there, and all of a sudden he's just so comfortable coming off those screens with Tice, knocking it down. It's just, they needed someone to carry them tonight, especially when the offense went dry, so dry there in that third quarter into the early fourth. And Tatum had the answer every single time. Uh, it's magical to watch. There's so much there's so much more than just basketball in this game right, right here. You know, with the afternoon start and Kevin Durant playing and even with Kyrie Irving, all this stuff there. Like Tatum playing on this level with all the stuff surrounding it just proves that when it is the playoffs and there is emotion and you go down 2-1 and you got a big game, you know that he's going to deliver. And Forsberg touched on it a little bit, talking about, you know, Jason Tatum being out there and being a leader. Scal, where did you see his leadership skills really show up in this game? It was the simple plays that he made, not the spectacular plays that we're showing right here. It's the way that he was getting off of the ball. He was patient with it. And other guys were, like, getting and eating off of that. And it didn't always lead to an assist. But how many times did he make the nice play that led to the extra pass that led to an assist for somebody else? His hockey assist numbers were really high today. And I don't think he forced the issue. I think he, he took what the defense gave him with an, with an aggressive mindset. Like, right. anybody can go out there and just pass the ball around. Hey, I'm double teamed. And we saw that. And then uh, we heard the guys talking about it. Hey, I got two on me. I can't. I got to make the right play. No, no. This is the right play. The right play of being aggressive, getting downhill, and then making that play where you give your guy an extra half a second to be wide open. That is the maturity that we're seeing right now. And I didn't buy it early in the season. Oh, well, I'm getting double teamed. No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. you make, you're the best player on the team. I see you on every commercial. You're making $30 million, whatever you're making, right? All that adds into you need to be aggressive and you need to get other guys involved in a, in a way that they have the time to knock down the shot, the extra space you right. need. One of the things I loved was there was a sequence probably midway through the fourth where it felt like him and Durant were just going to start going back and forth at each other. And we all sat there in the newsroom going, ah, oh, because he gave the ball up. But it, was, it shows the maturity, right? Like, 
when the Nets started sending people his I way. I didn't do that. You did that. No, I, I, I saw it. But <laughs> I, I, wanted to... I was enjoying the duel, but I wasn't like, I'm not down on him making that play. I know, but like, I'm not down on him either. And I think it shows great maturity that a player who knows they're in this sort of one-on-one -on -one battle yeah. here has the maturity to move the ball to a teammate who has a better shot. And I think that shows great growth. And the fact that when it needed to was when he was like, all right, I'm just going to take over. I'm going to go through four defenders and finish this layup and get this win. I mean, a call out a bad shot that Jason Tatum took. He took 30. And you know, I, and I wanted to talk about that too because Emil Doka pointed that out. Him taking the right shots yeah. out there on the floor. Talk about that a bit because I feel like people watch the game and they see him put up 54 points, but I think the shot selection is For important sure. as well. You, can you got one? I don't got one. I don't got a single yeah. shot where I'm like, ooh, right. probably should have passed that one. I don't have one. He took 30 of them. He got other people involved. He had the ball in his hands a ton. Like, you can, uh, one off the top of your head, argue a decision that he made. Yeah. Argue a simple pass. That, like, right now, we can, early on in the year, I can pick five. Oh, man, probably should have got downhill on that. And it's easy over here, me chilling, right, watching the game. But when he's out there doing it, like, you cannot, and, and I'm, how about the last five games? Have pick a, pick a possession mm -hmm. where you didn't like what Tatum did. Oh, there's so many turnovers in the first half of that Memphis game, like just getting sloppy. I, I, I just, as you're talking, I look down. Only two turnovers tonight. Yeah. You think about how much he had the ball in his hand. Elite, man. Elite. Yeah, Jason Tatum is definitely elite out there on the court. All right, let's take a look at how Kevin Durant and Jason Tatum match up in this afternoon matinee. You see 54 points for Jason Tatum, 37 for Kevin Durant, 16 of 30 from the field for Jason Tatum, 8 of 15 from three, five rebounds and three assists in those 54 points. Second most in Jason Tatum's career. I think the highest also in, re in a regulation game for Jason Tatum. Uh, when you take a look at, you know, we've been talking about all season long about the Celtics team going up against teams and winning games without superstars out sure. there on the floor. You talk about Brooklyn. They beat them several times without KD and without Kyrie. Mm -hmm. Forsberg, what does this win do for the Celtics in terms of solidifying these wins? I mean, here's the thing. We keep saying they haven't beaten good teams. It's now 10 straight wins over playoff pick your teams and I think it's just time to move on from that that notion like you look at the standings and the Celtics have won more games against above 500 teams than any other team in the Eastern Conference sure they put themselves in some bad positions they've had miserable losses like I can five bad losses jumped them out immediately Minnesota against the JV Timberwolves all those have put you in the position where you still got to climb and fight to get into that top four but like the Celtics have proven over the last six weeks they are for real they are legitimate and when they they didn't even play their best defense tonight and when they it, they got kind of lulled into this kind of back and forth battle and that's okay because that sometimes happens in these in matches like this but they've shown they can win every which way if they have to now and they this was a clutch game finally we kept saying oh what would happen yeah, in, a, yeah. in, a, in a tight matchup against a good team Scott, they've, they've checked all the boxes they have and defensively they did as well they, like I'm not a big fan of double teaming late I do think you have to double team Kevin Durant they didn't get they didn't get burned by that they, they rotated out you know, Kevin Durant's going to make the right play, just going to give that ball up. And I thought defensively, even though it was a lot of points throughout this game, defensively, I thought they were great and great in the fourth quarter. And we had this, the Miller 75 moment, and I, I made a joke that we weren't going to double team Paul Pierce. And all of a sudden, after that uh, quarter, oh, now we got to double team Paul Pierce, right? And so I wonder moving forward, if we match up with the Nets in the playoffs, I wonder if Steve Nash will double team Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. Because you know, Ime is going to double team Kevin Durant and I have a lot of friends who are net fans and, and some Celtic fans and we're on a group chat and on that group chat they were like so Steve Nash not going to double team Jason Tatum because mm. he didn't he left him one on one mm -hmm. and from there we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all unfolds but I, you could see the big difference between Kevin Durant not having the ball in his hands and Jason Tatum having the ball in his hands late in the game and I thought that was a mistake by Nash and like I said, I'm not really a double team guy, but on that night, you could tell Jason Tatum, he, he was, he was going to make the right play and he was going to make a shot that he took. And I'm surprised they didn't double team Jason Tatum because a lot of teams that come into TD Garden, they're double teaming sure. Jason Especially Tatum late. night in mm -hmm. and night out and late in those games. All right, let's send it out to Abby Chen, who's with Rob Williams yes. right now. Yes. Oh, look, can I get a stop? <laughs> Rob, this felt like more than one of 82. What was it like being out there on the floor? Uh, it was a great matchup. You know, we've been looking forward to this. Um, those guys have been healthy just playing against us. Um, I feel like both teams pushed each other, you know, to the, uh, to the, to the extent, but um, came out with the dub, so we have it, man. Five blocks in the first half for you. Defensively, what was the key? Um, you know, we got uh, ISO guys, you know, uh, defensively I've been uh, helping anchor all year. Uh, I was slipping up with that a little bit, but my coach and teammates got me. 54 points for Jason Tatum. Is this the best game you've seen him play? Um, 
maybe one of them, but uh, Scott was living for that guy, man. He don't even know it. So, uh, great player, great team leader, you know. We got leaders like that, it's easy to follow. We talked about this stretch, these four games here. This is the third. You guys have gone 3-0. and Supposed to be tough tests. What are you showing? What are you learning about this team right now? Uh, we just wanted to show it wasn't a fluke. You know, the run we've been on, uh, showing resiliency, showing guys locked in, you know, togetherness, you know, uh, during the beginning of the season, the crunch, you know, we seem to lose each other. So, again, we stand with that. Rob, thank you. Congratulations. No